Hello everyone. Welcome to this video of IPMAT Indore 2023 Quantitative Ability Multiple Choice Questions section. This is Durga Shankar. I am the National Chief Mentor with IMS Learning Resources and I'll take you through these video solutions for all the questions in this particular section. So let's go ahead one after the other. Now the very first question is an interesting one because it combines the concepts of logarithms and trigonometry. Now it is given that log sine x base cos x plus log cos x base sine x is equal to two and we are to find the value of x. Now for this question, let us look at the conventional method. Now log sine x base cos x can be written as log of sine x by log of cos x plus log cos x base sine x can be written as log cos x by log sine x and this is equal to 2. Now, the smarter way would be that a student who can observe a particular property here will be able to identify the answer in just one more step. What is it? Now, if I consider log sine x by cos x as let's say k, then log cos x by sine x will be of the form 1 by k. Now, if k is a non-negative value and k plus 1 by k is equal to 2, it is clear that k is equal to 1 by k, where individually each of them will be equal to 1. Now, thereby, I can say log sine x base cos x is equal to 1. So by the property of logarithms or the definition of logarithms, I can say sine x is equal to cos x. And all of us know that sine and cos will be equal in value and sine when x is equal to 45 degrees or rather pi by 4. Now substituting n is equal to 1 or even if not substituting the value of n, you can see that the value of x will be pi by 4 for any value of n from the first option. Now, if you are unsure of that, you can substitute n is equal to 1, 2, 3 and see that in option A, every time it gives you a value that is equivalent to pi by 4. Hence, the right answer is option A. Now, in case if the student hasn't got the idea of writing this entire value as k plus 1 by k is equal to 2, then let me also show you the conventional method in which you can solve this question. So, I will write this as k plus 1 by k is equal to 1 which helps me form a quadratic equation. So k square plus one by k is equal to two, thereby k square minus two k plus one is equal to zero, or k minus one whole square is equal to zero, which gives you the value of k equal to one. Again, similar to what we have done earlier, now, when k is equal to 1, we get log sine x base cos x is equal to 1. And hence, sine x is equal to cos x, where the value of x that satisfies always is pi by 4. Now, let's see the second question. We need to find the set of all real values of x satisfying the given inequality. Now, let me show you both the conventional method as well as a smart cut, which will help you identify the answer faster. Now, when I multiply the entire equation or inequality with x minus 1 into 2x plus 1 whole cube, now we get x square into x plus 1 into x minus 1 into 2x plus 1 whole cube divided by x minus 1 whole square into 
2x plus 1 whole power 6 greater than 0. Now, irrespective of the value of x, the denominator x minus 1 whole square into 2x plus 1 whole power 6 will always be positive. So if I want the inequality to be positive, then the numerator must definitely be positive. So x square into x minus 1 into x plus 1 into 2x plus 1 whole cube is greater than c. Now let us look at all the critical points for x. Critical points are nothing but the roots of this expression. So the value of x for which the expression becomes 0 because that is where essentially the graph intersects the x-axis. Now, if I draw a number line to plot these values, so of course, x is equal to 0 is one value, x is equal to 1, x is equal to minus 1, and x is equal to minus 1 by. Let us understand how this expression behaves in each of these intervals. Now, the behavior is in terms of whether its value will be positive or negative. If I substitute a value less than minus 1, let us say if I substitute x is equal to minus 2, then the entire expression becomes negative. If I substitute a value between minus 1 and minus 1 by 2, say something like minus 0.75. Now, if x is equal to minus 0.75, I don't have to calculate how much is the expression, but I only want to know whether it is positive or negative. So if you substitute x is equal to minus 0.75, you can clearly see that the expression becomes positive. Now substitute a value between minus 1 by 2 and 0. So let's say a minus 0.25, which makes the expression negative. If you substitute a value between 0 and 1, let's say a 0.5, then also the expression remains negative. And if I substitute a value greater than 1, let's say x is equal to 2, undoubtedly the expression becomes positive. Now, since I want my expression to be greater than 0, from what we have calculated now, I can easily determine that for the inequality to be true, x must lie between minus 1 comma minus 1 by 2 union 1 comma infinity. Hence, answer option B. However, this is slightly time consuming. If possible, since there are answer options, we can try and figure out the right answer quickly. Now, how is it possible? Let's verify. Now, when I look at the expression, since I want the expression to be greater than zero, meaning I want it to be positive, definitely the value of x cannot be equal to zero cannot be equal to minus 1 because x equal to 0 and x equal to minus 1 will make the entire expression 0. At the same time, for the expression to be valid, the denominator cannot be 0, which means x cannot be 1 and x cannot be minus 1 by 2. Now, the moment I say x cannot be equal to 1, in the first option, the range that has 0 to plus infinity doesn't satisfy because 1 is not a possible value for x. So rule down. Also, I can easily exclude option C because minus 1 comma 0 includes x is equal to minus 1 by 2, which is not a possible answer. Now I am left with option B and D. How do I eliminate one of them? Now, let me substitute a value for x and see which of these two intervals satisfy. For example, if I take x is equal to minus 2. Now, 
I would take a value of x, which is satisfied by only one of these inequalities, so that if it satisfies, becomes easy for me to eliminate one of the wrong answers. Now, if I take x is equal to minus 2, clearly the expression is negative. So, x should not include minus 2. Thereby, option D is eliminated, leaving B only to be the option that's available, which has to be the right answer. Now, let's see this question. Now, I'm sure most of the students in the exam wouldn't have attempted this question the moment they saw that it is from the topic of matrices. As I always keep saying, the difficulty level of the question is not determined solely by the topic or by the length of it. And this question is a classic example of that. Though it's a problem of matrices, let me show you how easily we can find the answer provided we have a sound knowledge of the fundamentals of the topic. Let's see what the question at hand is. Now we have A as a two by two matrix given, and it is mentioned that determinant of A cube minus three A square minus five A is equal to zero. Then we want to know one of the values of A can be which one from the answer options. Now, determinant of a cube minus 3a square minus 5a equal to 0. Now, if I take out a common, I can write this as determinant of a into determinant of a square minus 3a minus 5 equal to 0. Now, by the standard logic of product of two numbers is 0, it means either of them is 0. So, which means either determinant of A is 0 or determinant of A square minus 3A minus 5 equal to 0. Let's verify for the first one. When will determinant of A be 0? So, determinant 1, 2, 3A is equal to 0. So, cross multiply 1 into A minus 3 into 2 is equal to 0 which means A is equal to 6. So for one value of A equal to 6, the given equation will be true. And we are fortunate to have 6 in the answer options, hence option D. In case if we do not have option D, then we resort to the second condition, the determinant of A square minus 3A minus 5 equal to 0. And from there, we try to find the suitable values for small. 